Welcome to another special edition of the Timco Retail Manager course. We built the Timco Retail Manager application to simulate what a real-world application would look like so we can use it as a learning testbed. One of the big areas of focus was on the upgraded.NET Core, which is almost complete at this point. In this video, we're going to be upgrading our WPF front-end project. Note that up until now, we're still using .NET Framework for our front-end application, even though our class library it's using is .NET Standard 2.0, even though our API is .NET Core 3.0, and even though the API's class library is .NET Standard 2.0. So this shows just how valuable it is or how easy it can be in some instances to move just parts of your application up to .NET Core or .NET Standard. With that being said, if your application doesn't quite fit in that mold, then maybe it's time to refactor your application to better allow for a, prog a progression like this. Okay, that's getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's first talk about the source code for today's video. If you're a Patreon member, head on over to Patreon to get the source code download. Also check out that special bonus offer. It's almost time for that to be done. So make sure you get that before it goes away. For mailing list members, if you haven't yet jumped on the mailing list, uh, now's a great time to do it. The people who have already been on it have gotten a deal this week already, but there's another deal coming uh, shortly. So get on the mailing list now before it's too late and before you miss that special deal. Okay, finally, I'm going to launch this course on IamTimCorey.com. In fact, some of you have already gotten this course on IamTimCorey.com. You can purchase the entire course, including all the videos in this series, the source code from every video, fully downloadable content, and more on that site, okay? The course will cover everything through the upgraded.net core. So if this, um, this series continues, which it will, it won't continue on the site. It's going to end .NET core upgrade. It's the big culmination, the big milestone. After that, we will do probably another add-on course for the later editions. But until then, you can watch it on YouTube, and also Patreon members can still get the source code as we go as we go forward. Okay. Now, if you have any questions, the links are all in the um, comments down below. And if you had any questions for me directly, you can always email me uh, tim at iamtimcorey.com. You can definitely do that. All of my examples uh, I use I usually put my email address in. That's an actual email address. Go ahead and email me. If you're on the mailing list, you get an email from me. In fact, you get multiple emails from me. And yes. One of the questions is, well, aren't they automated? Well, sure they are. I've got over 10,000 people on the mailing list. But when you get an email from me, you can reply to that email. It comes to me. I will read it. I will try to respond. Okay? I may not be able to solve your problem. I cannot debug your code necessarily. I definitely can't do code reviews. There's just not enough time. But I will try to answer your question or point in the right direction. Okay? That's my promise to you. All right. Enough talk. Let's get on to the code. So the last upgrade we have here is our desktop UI. So this is still going to be .NET Framework 4.7.2. Let's pop it open real quick and look at the packages.config, where we have a number of packages that we rely on. Automapper, Caliber and Micro and CaliberMicro.core, the Web API client and JSON, Configuration Manager, access control, permissions, and principal.windows. So are we going to need all of those? I'm not sure we are, but we're going to find out. Also, I do know ahead of time, we've already done this once, Caliber and Micro is going to give us a little bit of a problem. But I think we can overcome some of those problems. So let's keep the packages.config. We're not going to merge this into our CS proj file. But let's also note the references. I do have a reference to TRM desktop library UI dot library, which I'm going to have to re add back in. So let's right click and say unload project and then edit the CS proj. And down here near the bottom, you're going to see the reference to that, that DLL. It's way down here. All right, right here, item group. And again, the, um, the conventional wisdom is copy this and paste it into your new CS proj file. I'm not a big fan of that. 
unless you can, unless you have a ton of them. But if you can help it, I'd prefer you not do that because this product, GUID and all the rest, that's not going to come across in the new way of doing things. I'd prefer you have a clean new CS proj file. So we'll get to how to do this in just a minute. Let's first control A and wipe everything out. Project SDK Microsoft dot net. I almost always forget dot net dot SDK dot Windows desktop. This is a little different from our previous versions. We have that additional Windows desktop at the end. Property group output type is WinExe. So it's a WinExe output. Next we're going to do is set up our target framework. Okay, and that's going to be net core app 3.0. So this is the .NET Core 3.0 app. We didn't get to do that in the API because we recreated the entire API. And then use WPF, which is true. That's also not in IntelliSense. And let's go ahead and delete our generate assembly instead of saying don't generate the assemblies. So we're going to do just that. So we have Windows Desktop at the end of our project. We have the output type of WinExe, the target framework of Net Core App 3.0, and Use WPF is set to true. We'll close that out, and we'll reload the project. Good, good, good. And then we're going to delete our assembly info.cs. We didn't say don't generate, so it's going to generate for us instead. Now we have to add our dependency back in. So add a reference to TRM desktop UI dot library. Once we do that, note that it adds this item group, but all it has is a project reference to our CS proj file. There is no uh, GUID in here. So that's the difference in the layout. If we just copy and paste it, it will have worked, but it's just a little cleaner to do it this way. Okay, now we do have all of our um, our dependencies on, for example, Caliber and Micro and AutoMapper. I know I need AutoMapper and Caliber and Micro. Let's go to AutoMapper and add that in. In Caliber and Micro, I'm going to kind of shortcut some of our work here because I know that version 3.2.0 does not work with .NET Core 3. It was published back in 2017. That's just not, it's not new enough to work with the .NET Core that we need. Okay, so what do we do? Well, I'm going to change my package source up here. And I'll give you this link in just a minute. But I have a Caliber Micro package source, which is their nightly builds. Okay, I'm going to include pre-release. And notice we have alpha 4.0.100 alpha. I know that version 4.0.89 and above work with .NET Core. Now, yes, we're using an alpha version, but we're going to have to to be cutting edge. Now, in case any of you are wondering, does Caliburn Micro get updated frequently? Notice all these alpha builds. Now, they're not public releases. You can get them, but they encourage you to stay on the um, tried and tested release, and that's going to be a little bit slower to get the new alpha versions out into a more stable version. But this was last updated two days ago, according to when I'm recording this. So this is a well-updated package. I'm going to hit install on this latest version. Now, the downside of installing a alpha build is you will run into alpha problems. Okay, so just know that we may run into problems with how this works. If something in the later build caused a problem, we may have to roll back to that 8.9 version, which I know was working with .NET uh, Core 3 and with uh, with Caliburn, with uh, all of our changes, the ones 
the typical ones I use with Caliber Micro. So if we have to, we'll roll back. We'll see. Okay. So now let's build our desktop UI. It should probably have some breaking changes. And it does. So the first error I see is the iHandle login events. It says does not implement the interface. And it says because it's handle async. So what has changed is that let's let's shrink some of these down for a minute. There's a lot of errors here. But what has changed is that what we have is handle. It's no longer handle. It's handle async. So if I were to implement this interface, this is now the code. Well, I can move the code over, and that seems like it would probably work, except for the fact that and I can now get rid of this. But it says activate item does not exist. So what are my options here? Change activate item to active item. That doesn't sound right. Or change it to activate item async. Well, that sounds about right. And then how about await like so? Nope, that's not going to work. Well, the issue here is actually that we need to mark this as async. Okay. And then we also should probably await this. And the reason why is because there's no argument given. Ah, I need to pass a cancellation token through. So the reason we're changing this up is because right now this, this return handle async return a task but I want to actually await for the activate item async to happen before I say, hey, you're logged in. Otherwise, what could happen is it would trigger us off. It's not done yet, but we say we're logged in and we're not fully logged in yet. So that could cause a conflict. So to keep it in order, I'm going to await this and then notify a property change. The cancellation token will allow us to cancel this task if the cancellation is passed in. So that's uh, one issue. I believe we had another issue in here. Yep, we did. Active item instead of, uh, or activate item instead of activate item async. Which means that logout should be a, an async task. And we should await this. And we need to pass in a cancellation token, which we don't have. So new cancellation token. Is that ideal? No, that's not ideal. But at the same time, it's no worse than what we had before because before we didn't have the ability to even be asynchronous. So this is not um, degrading our performance at all. It's just not giving us any improvements. All right. And then again, activate item. So async task and then await, and at the end, we're going to pass in a new cancellation token, like so. And that's, oh, it's activate item async. Okay. And try close does not work. What do you think the error there is going to be? How about try close async? Okay, so with this, we don't even have to um, do anything here. We can say try close this thing. We don't need to make a task out of it and all the rest. That's fine. I believe that solves one page worth of problems. And our error list is down to one activate item here. Okay, so we still need to resolve this activate item to be activate item async. And we'll add a new cancellation token, like so. And we'll await this. Actually, we won't await it. We'll let it go as is. Now, we do have a green squiggly here that says event aggregator extensions dot subscribe is obsolete. Use subscribe on published threads instead. Um, let's just see. My guess is that 
this, wow, okay. So my guess was I was going to break some stuff, but it didn't. So therefore, we're good. So publish on subscribe on, I'm sorry, subscribe on published threads means that when you get an event back, it's going to come back on the thread that you called it from or that you expect that you subscribed to. So therefore, we're in the UI thread right now. So when we get back an event, we're going to get back on the UI thread, which is what we want because we're going to show that event. All right, let's build again. We have eight more errors. Cool. Publish on UI thread. Okay. My guess is we don't need that anymore. Oh, it's published on UI thread async. New cancellation token, which let's do this. And Oops. Oh, I, I took the new out. That's why. Let's try it again. Add the user statement. And now we can await this properly. Okay. So that's another error out of the way. So far, this has not been too bad, which is I've just doomed myself to major problems, haven't I? Okay. Show dialogue. My guess is show dialogue async. Hey, how did I guess? And then down here, show dialogue async and try close async. Now we do be careful here because we are showing the dialogue asynchronously, but we should await this. Because otherwise, it may start to show it and then try and close. All right. And yes, because not everything is awaited. We're going to make sure we await these. Okay. And then we don't need to await this. So I think that the rest of this is all fine. The rest of the async calls will make sure they happen before we try and close. So that one should be okay. Let's build this again and see what we have left to deal with. Three more errors. Show dialog, which again, show dialog async, show dialog async and try close. Looks very familiar. So await and await. And we'll save that and let's build it again. Build succeeded. Do you think it'll actually work? I don't know. We're going to find out. Let's start it up. So the biggest change for, for um, Caliber and Micro seems to have been that everything went to asynchronous, asynchronous which is good. I mean, that, that's a good thing. It allows us to um, better use our our threading without having to worry about threading. But it does mean there's a lot of breaking changes, which is why it's a major version bump. So it was 3. Dot, 3 dot 3.8 or 3.5, whatever it was. Now it's 4.0. And of course, it's still an alpha. Let's log in. That seems to work. That seems to work. Let's go to our account. These all seem to work. And there we go. So now it looks like our application is all working properly with Caliber and Micro. Now, the one thing I didn't show you is I did a little bit of magic on NuGet. Where I was doing a search, I said package source instead of NuGet.org, I chose Caliber and Micro package source. And I didn't explain where that came from. So let's explain it now. You go to settings right here. You get to choose where your package sources are. So you can choose to say that you want your package feed from, let's say, Azure DevOps, which is a pretty important one to use because it's free and you can put private packages there. 
You can also cache the packages you use. Well, Calibern Micro has a package source where, or a feed where they put their nightly builds or their, um, their alpha builds. And that is this address right here. So what you do, and I'll, I'll put this address in the source code. What you do is you would say new feed, you would paste in the package source, give it whatever name you want, and then say update. Okay, so I am going to actually delete that one. But that's what I did here. I just call it Caliber and Mac Micro Package Feed. And you hit OK. Now the trick here is that when you have it selected over here on the right, and you go to search, let's just search for uh, anything that starts with system. No packages found. Well, how about Swashbuckle? We just found some stuff with that. No packages found. And you may say, what's going on with Nougat? Is it broken? No, Nougat's not broken. You just selected the wrong package source. Because this package source only supplies Caliburn Micro packages. You instead want Nougat.org, and all of a sudden there's a ton of swashbuckle packages for you. And they just keep coming. I mean, there's just tons of them. Okay? You could say all. And then in that case, when you do this, and you search for instead Caliburn Micro, you get this, and then you have all the options. You have the stable release is 3.2. Oh, it's 3.2. There you go. Or the alpha releases of 4.0. The difference is it kind of clogs things up, and it may have, have uh, versions in both places that hopefully aren't different, but in theory they could be. Um, I don't think so, but there's a theoretical issue there. So I prefer not to do all. I prefer to do nougat.org and then change it when I need to. That way I'm sure I know where my packages are coming from. All right. But this all does allow you to merge these two sources. It makes things a little bit more noisy. I mean, notice from uh, alpha version one through alpha version 100. Now there's some missing, but there's a lot right there. And that list scrolls before you even get to the stable versions. So it's up to you if you want to use the all or just nougat. I prefer just nougat. Okay, and they do have some alpha versions here, but the latest is 4062, which is not new enough for .NET Core 3. Okay, so with that, let's go to our Team Explorer. Let's make sure we've saved everything. Go to Changes, and we're going to say Upgraded WPF to .NET Core 3.0, and we're going to commit everything. And we will go ahead and push that up to the server. I do want to point out um, real quick that now we are done all of our upgrades. Our entire Timco Retail Manager solution has been upgraded to .NET Core 3.0 or .NET Standard 2.0, which will work with .NET Core 3.0. Okay, so everything is up to the new versions, everything is CD running fine. We don't seem to see any bugs. We may find some as we go. And we aren't using all the latest features of .NET Core 3, but they're available to us now. So for example, in our API, we had talked about the fact that uh, there's dependency injection, but we're not using that yet. And so that's something that we can take better advantage of and, and rework our DLLs to use dependency injection. We'd wanted to put dependency injection in place for a while. We just hadn't gotten around to it. Now we have it. We can just implement it throughout our application. Get rid of those equals new instantiations. Okay. So, but for WPF side of things, we're all up and running and we're all set to go. I hope that so far you've enjoyed this series. I hope that um, this has been enlightening. Uh, this is something that a lot of businesses need to go through. Okay, you may think that .NET Core is the way to go and you're going to build everything in .NET Core, but I guarantee you when you get to a real business that's, that's been using .NET for a while, they're using .NET framework applications. It's just because it's, that's what's been for 20 years. And so now that .NET Core is here and .NET 5 is coming, they need someone to help them transition over to .NET Core and prepare for .NET 5. And it's not something where you want to wait until .NET 5 to upgrade. 
you want to upgrade a .NET Core if possible. So now you have the skills. You've seen kind of the headaches that come along with it, kind of the, the problems that can come up, but also you've seen that you just don't panic. You slowly work the problem. Use your source control if you need to, to create branches and, and work on it longer term. Try things out, roll them back, try some more stuff, roll it back until you figure it out and get your applications up to speed. Now, if you have dependencies like Caliburn Micro, where they're not up to date yet, where they're not as responsive to keeping their application up to date, you may have some problems. But if you move most of your logic out into class libraries, you will be much better set up for the future. So if you can't do anything else, move your logic into class libraries. Start slow, start moving it out, and use a .NET standard 2.0 library so that it will still work with your .NET framework applications, but yet it's ready to be used with .NET Core as well. Then, worst case scenario, you have to redo just your user interface, but not your logic. Your user interface is not your application. It's just the, the top skin of your application. The actual work is the C-sharp code. And if you move as much as possible in your class library, you'll have a much easier time upgrading your user interface. I'm not saying it's an easy time. I'm saying it's an easier time. So that's, that's for you to start working on because this is what businesses need. They need people who are confident in this process, people that know how to do it. And you've gone through this process already with a real application. So you've started to learn how to do this. You can practice again. Take the code before we upgrade, do the upgrade again. Struggle through and figure out the solutions, okay? Get this experience so that when a business comes to you or when you go to a business and you say, I can help you, you have those skills, they're going to look at you in a different light than every other candidate. Okay? So that's my, my encouragement to you is to learn this stuff because it really is important. Still know how to use .NET framework stuff because that is what rules business still. But help them move to the latest versions. Okay? Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this series so far. It's not done here. We're going to go further. We're going to bring in Xamarin. We're going to bring in some other tools as well. But I do want to uh, put a break here because this is kind of the culmination of this first phase of this project or this, this application is moving to .NET Core. Okay? So thank you for watching. Thanks for being a part of this special week of, of upgrades. I appreciate you. And as always, I am Tim Corey.